Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here in Jerusalem. Lovely day getting into nighttime here. It's on a setting across my window. Um, and I wanted to record a video today on a subject that I think uh, might be of interest to people living in Israel. And if you are living in Israel and you buy stuff from the internet, whether you're buying from AliExpress or eBay in particular, uh, but also from Amazon. Amazon is generally um, more streamlined than AliExpress and eBay from a customs clearance perspective. Um, but nevertheless, you do have to sort of like be careful. Uh, now, obviously, I just want to clarify, I'm not uh, recording this video from the perspective of a customs broker or an expert in this area by any means. Uh, what I do want to just get across is that when you hear people saying that customs can seize your modem at the airport or if you try to buy it online, they're actually correct. It can totally happen. Um, I know this firsthand because I attempted to buy last year a wireless doorbell and it was a whole epic saga that ended up falling into the hands of this derelict customs clearance company and I've been invited to participate in literally a class action lawsuit because they're so bad they never asked for this issue uh, permit from Israel uh, nevertheless this can happen even if you've got a good customs forwarding agent you just have to be aware of it and what's going on behind the scenes so um, really interesting article up on haaretz.com from Merav Arlasanorov uh, Arlasarov? Arlasarov, as in Arlasarov in Tel Aviv. Um, and she basically explains that, you know, Israel does have a reputation for being super bureaucratic at times. And I've generally found it not to be so bad. Um, but I can see that there are areas where that reputation maybe is, you know, a bit more deserved than in other places. And it seems to me like this is one of those areas that technically to do things by the book, if your wireless equipment isn't already certified by Misrad Tikshoret, the communications ministry, then either you or your uh, customs clearance broker needs to go through the process of applying for an issue, a permit um, afresh. And Israelis are obsessed with Ishurim, and issue in uh, English translates as, you know, permit, uh, but Israelis like love these. You practically need an issue to like raise a ruler on your desk in Israel. Though that's an exaggeration. But uh, she points out in this article that basically, did you buy your kid a remote controlled car toy on your last trip abroad? Um, actually, let me just read from the lead. It might sound funny that the Bluetooth headphone you bought abroad is illegal, but that arcane law also pushes up prices and keeps consumers behind technologically. Now, the law to which she's referring is the Telegraph Law of 1972, or that's when this law was last amended. You can see up on the Knesset website, um, some of the legislation, I didn't go digging through it in Hebrew. But the point that I do want to make is that wireless equipment and telegraphs might sound like something from the last century, but it's actually very, very relevant to today because uh, wireless is a pretty broad category of electronics, whether we're talking about wireless microphones or modems, or as she said, a remote controlled kit, anything that uses some kind of wireless technology and that's a pretty big spectrum of different radio frequencies to operate could fall foul of this legislation. So I did a little bit of digging and that's what I wanted to show you guys in the screen share. And I'm doing this as a screen share because it wouldn't really be effective to uh, try to explain something when there's pages on the internet. So what you can do if you want to see what's going on, if you've ordered something wireless and whether uh, any show is going to be needed or not is go onto the website of uh, and you'll find a page there that says in Hebrew which means a request for the issue, the authorization of uh, wireless equipment. Now I'm just going to also highlight a bit of this page. It says here in Hebrew uh, so what that means is if it's a one-time request for importing a wireless device, their uh, processing time, their you know SLA, if you will, service level agreement is 14 business days. And this form, I think, is really intended for importers, but just saying that if you are looking for a recurring permit or something longer, then it's going to be 20. And it mentions this delightful law, the uh, tele the telegram telegram law, 
of uh, 1972 telecommunications law. So um, worth knowing. Now there is a video here and uh, they actually do a pretty good job at explaining what the situation is and just like kind of cluing people into the fact that So um, what confuses me, I'm not sure if this is actually intended for consumers because you can use this form as a uh, personal, there is, you can actually fill out this form both as a uh, customs professional and on behalf of yourself. So the fact that there is space for, um, to, to do the DIY approach kind of suggests to me that this is dual use and this video certainly makes it seem. What they're saying is like, if you buy a Rahfan, a drone on the internet, you want to bring it to Israel, um, and you don't want it to get stuck in Meches, which is customs, which is this caricature guy. So this little graphic is just showing the different types of things that could inadvertently uh, fall under the, the category. And it's just saying that the, it's explaining the purpose of this regulatory structure that, you know, they're trying to keep frequency separate and that's why even though this regulation seems very bureaucratic and very red tapish there is a reason for it so they're showing you know for example wi-fi is kept on its spectrum um radio navigation equipment is kept on a separate spectrum cellular and drones are kept on a separate spectrum and that's the point of all this it's not, it's not to make life difficult for consumers it's just to make sure that everything coming in um is you know going to be coordinated that you're not going to have interference between some guy operating a uh, custom modem he bought on the internet and emergency response it wouldn't really happen because those are different frequencies but that's the purpose of a regulatory structure such as this Excuse me, I'm some chewing gum. Oh, okay. So saying that there is a quick, uh, whoops, wrong screen. They're saying there's a quick mechanism for checking what is um, already approved so that you don't need to like do double work. And it's also explaining that if you don't have something approved, uh, you can go and complete this form, which I just did to see if there's any way I can try to get that. Uh, damn wireless intercom uh, that got stuck. The, la the last people I spoke to were actually Mr. Adetik Shore and they said because the customs guy never presented the request for Isho, it got stuck in some kind of bureaucratic black hole. This is the class action lawsuit I've been invited to participate in. Uh, so I just did this just out of curiosity to see if it will work. I didn't want to order something new only to find that the request would be denied and I would just waste more money attempting to get a wireless intercom. In any event, the video is explaining now how um, the form works. And it's a six page form. I just filled it out so I can tell you what kind of stuff it asks for in English uh, in case this is helpful to people. Um, you, It's gonna ask you for, basically, so know the manufacturer. I'm gonna just make myself a little bit bigger here. This is my first time. I think I mentioned I'm doing like a few takes so I tend to like lose track of what I, said in previous takes, if I didn't already mention, um, this is the first time I'm cropping myself in the webcam side of things. So basically, what you're gonna need if you do wanna do this form yourself, which is, um, it could speed things up, uh, instead of doing it for the importer, is you need to know the make and the manufacturer. So whether you're bringing in a modem or uh, let's say the wireless doorbell thing. So at a minimum, you should know the name of the manufacturer, the name of the device, one other tip that I would give, again, not as a customs pro, but just as somebody who orders uh, electronic gadgets online to Israel, is what I frequently find good on websites like AliExpress is if there's an option not to include the batteries, do that. The batteries are considered a hazmat, a hazardous material, and you just create another possible point where things will go wrong if they're not properly labeled as, haz as hazmats. So um, if there is like an option to not include batteries and source them locally, that's typically what I would go for, even though it's typically more expensive as well. Um, and 
the other thing you might need is a spec sheet. So the purpose of this, someone at Misrata Tikshore, they're just evaluating what frequency is being used and they're just gonna check uh, the spec sheet to make sure that what you, that the information you're providing is accurate. Now, um, how to find a spec sheet. So, you know, if you're buying higher end um, equipment, whether that's a uh, some kind of wireless gear, uh, you can usually find that by searching for uh, PDF. So the way to do this, one of the ways to do this is just going to show you quickly. V7. This was the ill-fated wireless doorbell, and uh, what it just did is just do file type PDF. So that'll limit your search rules to PDF. The reason I do this is because uh, let's just look for another one uh, like the the gimbal I just got, which I think would also be fall under this legislation because technically it's it's a Bluetooth device. Ronin SC. That's a gimbal by DJI. Just gonna go ahead and refresh this, see what we've caught up here. So there's a compatibility list and um, you might just find, have a look through the various PDFs you can get on the internet. There is a, a requirement that the, um, the file size be limited to four megabytes. So you might need to compress whatever PDF that you do locate. Um, in any event, that's generally how I do it. But what you can also do um, is just, you know, I've exported the product description from AliExpress where it has that section uh, that talks about the um, wireless uh, frequencies. And in the case of this wireless intercom, it said it's working over 2.4 uh, gigahertz, um, sorry, 2.4 Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, 801.11 BNG Wi-Fi, which is 2.4 gigahertz on the radio spectrum. So uh, you just need to research these things and uh, look up the product descriptions, data sheets, that kind of stuff is what it's called. And you'll generally find, get something preferably official looking from the manufacturer uh, that says it'll let the per person at customs know um, exactly what it is that you're importing and how it works from a radio perspective. Where were we? The nope, that's my YouTube. Um, that's my YouTube. Ah, yes. So yeah, um, also asks for your um, your uh, receipt. So let's say you bought a um, you know a wireless microphone on AliExpress. What you can do is just go and it's not going to come for a while. And uh, so what you can do is just you know send them the pro forma invoice if there's a field for an airway bill if you're doing something a bit more fancy. Um, and just you can attach those forms after you tell them the particulars, which is again. Uh, what are you buying? What is it? There's a field for that. Like, is it an intercom? Is it a drone? Is it a, is it a router? Um, then the data sheet, then the frequencies. Um, and I think that's about it, but it is a pretty thorough process. So um, that is basically the video of Spain's at work. Let me just show you before, before I conclude over here. So two things to show. I'm just gonna clear my screen for a moment. This is fun dealing with Israeli bureaucracy, huh? So this is a form. As I said, it's a six, six page form. And as I also said, um, you have um, Feels basically for if you want to do a DIY approach. The first question is, I'm uh, a cash the requester. What are you? I tend to get the vowelization horrible uh, when I'm just reading Hebrew and they're unfamiliar, complicated words like these. I know what they mean. Prati is private and machsani is like um, what's the word? Like a trade, trade. So you're a reseller basically. Uh, one time import and so on and so I'm not going to go through the whole form one thing I would would point out is that they're often they leave an email address visible in the URL of these forms so you could probably uh, send this address an email to follow up on your equipment just an, just an idea um, 
what else so that's that that's the form and um, one final thing i do want to show is a resource that they have so if you go to misrad uh, hatik shorets there the communication ministry just follow the link here from that uh from the meches forum website and what you can do there is a section here it says you will owe uh, which means import of uh, import of uh, communications equipment okay so what you can do is click on this and the same uh, same video I think it's the same video you can see so you can see the point they're trying to make here look wireless doesn't mean just the walkie-talkies it can also mean uh, wireless mice and uh, same video and um, it can be wireless keyboard. It's pretty broad, anything that doesn't work through, uh, through um, wired means. So there's a section to this page that says Kishurim Chashuvim, it means important links in Hebrew. And what you can see here is two, two good ones to know about. So I'm gonna read them off here. So you del Khuti Pritim, Shakiblu Ishura, Stuff that received the Ishur, the permit for uh, resale use. That's so you got the shekel uh, emoji next to the box. Uh, That's where I'm reading from here. Um, so this is the items for personal import that received a Ishur from Israel Tikshoret and they have them online here um, as a CSV or as a XL, XLSX CSV is um, comma separated values XLS, XLS, X it's a spreadsheet format um, and there is also here and it was this is where, where the X is these guys are not successful uh, so you can see the ones that did get the issue and you can see the ones that didn't get the issue so in the spirit of positivity, let's go, let's just take a quick look at those that did. So if I want to go into the, you can download these and this is on a website called data.gov.il, which is where the government releases data basically. So uh, you can click on the view icon, let's say for this one, and I can go in and actually see the data and it's organized. If I move myself somewhere that won't disrupt this process, like here, you can see that it's organized by equipment type, by, um, by Yatran here is a manufacturer and Degem here is model. So you can go through it and it's logically organized. So these are the ones that did receive the issue. So in the intercom section, we have products by Motorola, Shenzhen, Yunbrand, Huawei, and Google. So. I'm guessing I don't see my guy here. I don't see the Ekin H7, the Ekin whatever it's called, Ekin something or other. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing my uh, ill-fated intercom just didn't make this or something. So you can do that. You can also download. Um, you can also filter uh, the data, and what you can do here is download also the XLSX, and uh, you can just open it up as a spreadsheet and just go through, and you can see. Mechonot shelet, uh, sorry, mechoniot shelet, um, control mechanisms, machshia kesher. These are Motorola TLKR T61. I think those are walkie talkies, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just take a look. <clears throat> yeah, those are walkie talkies. You can really get under the hood of the customs people here and see, you know, um, what they have already approved and whatnot. Uh, so that's quite that's quite good. Sorry, jump, jumping around between tabs. Um, so that's that, and then the same process essentially for uh, the ones that didn't receive. You can look up Kartis uh, Reshet. Um, sorry, so we're we're still on Chiki Blue. Kartis Kartis Reshet. We have network cards. We have. Um, Modol, I'm not sure exactly what the Modol is, but you can look any of these up and see exactly what they are. Monitor, um, I'm not sure that's a camcorder monitor. 
etc 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 and then you can cross check with the list shall Loki blue and again go into your XLS X uh, format download it or view it online and you can even uh, it even gives you ways to connect to it as an API and you can see again the ill-fated intercoms that were not approved and I'm not sure what the reasons are for this but um, so you can at least know where you stand that I guess if you have something that is on the approved list you can just go ahead and order there's no fear that it's going to be stopped in customs you're going to pay for those um, custom brokerage and storage fees and if it's not then i guess you know not to order it and if it's in the indeterminate category either you or your customs agent can fill out the form that is to the best of my knowledge how i think this whole thing works so hope this video is useful um interesting systems they have in israel regarding everything bureaucratic uh i did not i have not to date received my wireless uh doorbell um but um i think it's good that they do as much as this system is bureaucratic I think it's good that they communicate the reason and I think it's good that they liberate this data for public consumption so you can just go ahead and look up yourself on the customs website data.gov.il the, the data website you can just see for yourself uh, what they're what they've already allowed and what they've already restricted and proceed accordingly hope this video is useful thank you guys for watching if you'd like more videos on topics such as this living in Israel <coughs> Linux technology wireless doorbells video equipment Feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.